Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 242. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about another awesome podcast called Profit Boss Radio. Profit Boss Radio is hosted by MBA and certified financial planner Hilary Hendershot, who highlights inspiring women who have created success in their financial and professional life. Each week, you can tune in and hear how women have paved the road to sustained success with both beliefs and actions. Check it out at ProfitBossRadio.com. On today's show, I wanted to talk with you about an article that I saw on MarketWatch that said a history-setting trading streak for the Dow and S&P 500 just came to a screeching halt. And the subtitle is 109-day streak for the S&P 500 and Dow ended on March 21st. Well, this is really interesting because I've been following along in our VIP experience group how this is one of the longest recoveries we've ever had. From the 2009 lows, the market has been on a tear and hasn't really had any kind of a serious pullback. You know, that's kind of like an earthquake that is supposed to happen every so many years. And when they don't have one, then you just wonder, is it gonna be a worse earthquake later on when it does happen? Well, it's kind of the same thing. The market tends to have pullbacks, especially 20% pullbacks every few years. We really haven't seen that. So what does that mean? Well, I wanted to read this article to you and then make some comments. It says, a 1% dive for the S&P 500 and Dow has finally happened after 110 trading sessions. Now, of course, this is talking about just another record that was set, which is that in 110 trading sessions, it hasn't even fluctuated 1%. So here's the article. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 Index halted a months-long streak without a 1% decline. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed 237 points, or 1.1%, at 20,668 on Tuesday, while the S&P 500 Index finished off 1.2% at 2344. The two main stock market gauges hadn't finished with a decline of 1% or more for a history-setting 110 days, but a sudden late-morning jolt pushed the indexes into a tailspin. The catalyst for Tuesday's slump wasn't definitive, but financial stocks were among the worst decliners, with Goldman Sachs delivering the biggest wallop to the blue-chip Dow gauge, cutting 62 points from the benchmark and dragging financials broadly lower. The broad market S&P 500 streak without a 1% down day is the longest since May 18, 1995, while the Dow's is the longest since September 20th, 1993, according to Dow Jones data. Here's a look at some of the recent streaks for stocks, which includes the day in which the benchmarks closed lower by at least 1%. And then it goes into a chart and it shows about 10 different dates that uh, we hadn't had a 1% decline in how many days. So it actually falls in the middle of the chart. Um, There have been as long as 155 days. That happened back in 1966. We can go back to 1944 when we didn't have a 1% move for 132 days, et cetera. And so 110 days is kind of in the middle of the pack. And then at the very bottom of the records, we have June 19th, 1957, where it was 89 days before it moved uh, 1%, before it declined 1%. And same for the S&P 500 index. So I can leave those on my website on the show notes page at lindapjones.com. And you can look at podcast 242 and see the charts there and see the full article. I'll post this full article over there too. 
So it goes on to say Tuesday's decline was without a clear spark, but comes as the banking sector, led by a drop in shares of Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, and the wider financial sector, have suffered a sharp retreat. The Dow was tied to the lion's share of losses for the S&P 500, with the financial select sector spider ETF ending sharply lower. That symbol is XLF. U.S. stocks had enjoyed an uptrend in the wake of President Donald Trump's election victory on November 8th on the back of hope for a rollout of a raft of pro-business policies, including tax cuts, deregulation, and a boost in infrastructure spending. On Tuesday, some market participants attributed the slump in equities to fears that Trump's legislative agenda as it pertains to Wall Street would face delays as the GOP-led health care overhaul plans appear to s- set to struggle on Congress. Perhaps factoring in the decline for financials was a slide in treasuries, with the benchmark 10-year treasury note offering a yield off 2.42% compared with 2.54% on Friday. Investors have been bidding up government bonds following, pushing yields lower, which move inversely to price, as the Federal Reserve raised rates last week, but offered a more subdued pace of rate hikes than had been expected. Lower yields can weigh on financial stocks, which have been among the centerpieces of the so-called Trump rally, undercutting profits from their lending business. End of article. So very interesting article here. I thought it was important for you to see. I think we have started a correction, which I think we will see uh, perhaps get more serious in the April or May time horizon and super serious. I'm very concerned about the September, October time horizon this year. So we've got lots of things that have really helped since the election. This bull market took off since Trump's election and his victory. And there is lots of optimism and there still is room for optimism. I just think that many of the things that is that are being worked on right now are probably going to show up more in GDP, more in corporate earnings, more in the economy in 2018 rather than 2017. And I think the market's gotten a bit ahead of itself, getting all excited about infrastructure spending and Obamacare repeal and replacement and the tax overhaul. And I think that some of those things, while some of that may get passed this year, the the benefits of some of those things won't really show up until 2018. There's just a lag time with government, with the economy. It just takes time for these things to filter through. And as good a news as some of this is, we have to wait to see it actually show up in the numbers. So I think right now, the market kind of bought on the rumor and the rumor is all this good stuff that's going to happen, but it's probably delayed a little bit and we may see some very sharp pullbacks, not just because of the delay, but because we really haven't seen that 20% correction for you know since 2009. So we really need to get a bigger correction, which again is a normal correction that happens every so many years, but I think we're due uh, in the cycles, I think we're due, we're overdue in just the regular time frame. I think we're going to have a bigger pullback this year, and uh, I just don't want you to be caught off guard. I want you to be expecting that we could see more volatility, and that this spring going into uh, summer and fall, it's going to be picking up pace. Another reason I see some additional volatility is worldwide financial markets and worldwide financial flows. And we know that there's going to be a big election in France. France is making their decision on whether they are going to vote for a popular president or vote for a more globalist president and, uh, and in fact, decide whether they're going to do their, quote, Brexit Uh, Because Marine Le Pen has said if she wins, she is going to take France out of the European Union and they are going back to their own currency. So she's been right up front with what she wants to do if she wins, which is different because, of course, Britain didn't have their currency in, in the euro. But with 
uh, France being part of the euro and wanting to leave that, that is going to, uh, if that happens, that is going to cause major re repercussions, uh, some of which we may see here in the U.S. So we're going to be watching all these things closely, and there's lots of exciting things happening, but I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that we really haven't seen that big pullback. I'm anticipating that this is the year that we are going to get the big one. So we're going to watch and see what happens uh, coming up. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, I hope you hit the subscribe button and get all of my podcasts as soon as they're published. And I'd love to hear from you and get a rating and review. If you're on an Apple product, that's over at iTunes. If you're on an Android product or other, that would be over at stitcherradio.com. And also, if you haven't yet gone to lindapjones.com to get your 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth, what are you waiting for? It's time for you to go over and get those 11 quick things, easy things that you can do to get your net worth moving in the right direction today. That's all for now. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.